The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind by William Kumquamba and Brian Mueller In a small village in Malawi, where people had no money for lights, nightfall came quickly and hurried poor farmers to bed. But for William, the darkness was best for dreaming. He dreamed of building things and taking them apart like the trucks with bottle cap wheels parked under his bed, and pieces of radios that he'd crack open and wonder, if I can hear the music, then where is the band? His grandpa's tales of magic also whispered in the pitch black of his room. Witch planes passed through the window while ghost dancers twirled around the room as if a hundred men were inside their bodies. At dawn, in the fields, William scanned the maze rows for magical beings. Then he wondered as a truck rumbled past, how does its engine make it go? Pay attention to where you throw that hoe, his father shouted. You'll cut off your foot. For all its power over dancers and flying things, magic could not bring the rain. Without water, the sun rose angry each morning and scorched the fields, turning the maize into dust. Without food, Malawi began to starve. Soon, William's father gathered the children and said, From now on, we only eat one meal per day. Make it last. In the evenings, they sat around the lantern and ate their handful, watching hungry people pass like spirits along the road. Money also disappeared with the rain. Pepani, his father said, I am sorry, you will have to drop out of school. Now William stood on the road and watched the lucky students pass, alone with the monster in his belly and the lump in his throat. For weeks he sulked under the mango tree until he remembered the library down the road, a gift from the Americans. He found science books filled with brilliant pictures. With his English dictionary close by, William put together how engines moved those big trucks and how radios pulled their music from the sky. But the greatest picture of all was a machine taller than the tallest tree with blades like a fan. A giant pinwheel? Something to catch magic? Slowly, he built the sentence. Windmills can produce electricity and pump water. He closed his eyes and saw a windmill outside his home, pulling electricity from the breeze and bringing light to the dark valley. He saw the machine drawing cool water from the ground and sending it gushing through the thirsty fields, turning the maize tall and green, even when farmers' prayers for rain went unanswered. This windmill was more than a machine. It was a weapon to fight hunger. Majesty a Mvepo, he whispered. I will build electric wind. In the junkyard, pieces appeared like rusted treasure in the tall grass. A tractor fan, some pipe, and bearings and bolts that required every muscle to remove. Tonga, he'd shout to the birds and spiders, holding up his prize. But as William dragged his medals home, people called out, This boy is Masala. Only crazy people play with trash. After many weeks, William arranged his pieces in the dirt. A broken bicycle, rusted bottle caps, and plastic pipe. Even a small generator that powered a headlight on a bike. For three days, he bolted, banged, and tinkered while chickens squawked and dogs barked and neighbors shook their heads, saying, What's Misala doing now? His cousin Jeffrey and best friend Gilbert soon appeared. Muli Blanji, 
they greeted. Can we help with electric wind? Grab your pongas and follow me, he said, and took them into the forest. Together they swung their sharp blades into the trunks of blue gum trees, then hammered them together to make the tower. Standing atop, William shouted, Bring it up! while the boys tugged and heaved. A crowd gathered below and gazed at this strange machine that now leaned and wobbled like a clumsy giraffe. Some giggled, others teased, but William waited for the wind. Like always, it came. First a breeze, then a gusting gale. The tower swayed and the blades spun round. With sore hands, once slowed by hunger and darkness, William connected wires to a small bulb which flickered at first, then surged as bright as the sun. Tonga, he shouted, I have made electric wind. Wachita Buina, a man yelled, well done. As the doubters clapped and cheered, William knew he had just begun. Light could not fill empty bellies, but another windmill could soak the dry ground, creating food where once there was none. Majesty am Vepo, electric wind can feed my country, William thought. And that was the strongest magic of all. The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind is the true story of William Kumquamba, who was 14 years old when his village in Malali was affected by a famine. William was inspired to create a windmill capable of turning the power of the wind into electricity. I love how he calls a windmill a giant pinwheel at first. Let's see if we can create one of those together. Let's start with a sheet of square cardstock. We're going to create guidelines to help us cut and pin the wings for our pinwheel. Using a ruler as a guide, create a diagonal line crossing the center of the square. Rotate the paper and create another line so that they cross in the very center. We'll cut along these guidelines to create four triangle shapes from our square, but we won't cut all the way through, so let's mark where to stop. Find the half inch mark on your ruler. Line up your ruler along the guidelines and make a mark one half inch from the center point on each line. We'll use this mark to tell us when to stop cutting. Now we'll create some marks to tell us how far to fold the wings. Place a mark in the middle of the space between each dot we just made. Here are our finished markings. Now it's time to cut our wings. Cut along each line and stop at the mark that we made half an inch from the center. Make sure to use safety scissors and ask a grown-up for help if you need it. Now we have four triangle shapes still attached at the center, and there are eight flaps total along the edges of the square. Now comes the difficult part. We're going to bend and pin our wings in place. Let's gather every other flap, crossing it over the center of the square. Make sure to line up the corner with the marking opposite the flap, making it cross over the center. Try to make the corner line up with the marking that we made between the lines. You might find it helpful to bend each wing before trying to catch them all at the same time and hold them together. Gently bend the wing over without folding it down completely. Hold it in place with your finger. We'll repeat this for every other flap. Let's get ready to attach the pinwheel to the long pin. 
You'll need a grown-up to help you use the sharp pin safely. When you're ready, hold the flaps down so that they each cross over the center. Now it's time to pin. Carefully press the pin into the center of the pinwheel, avoiding poking your fingers. Use a little pressure to hold the pin steadily in place. And instead of pushing the pin through the paper, try gently pulling the paper up onto the pin. Pull up each flap, then the back, as you hold the pin in place. Slide your fingers under the back of the pinwheel and hold the whole thing together. The sharp pin is sticking out the back of the pinwheel. Let's attach it to the pencil. Lay your pencil on the table and carefully press the pin through the eraser. Try to get it in the center. Make sure you do this on a table or a hard surface to stop the pin from going all the way through. Before you use the pinwheel, make sure the sharp end of the pin is not sticking out of the eraser. If it is, gently put it on the table and push it back a little bit. Make sure the wings can turn freely on the pin. Now it's ready! Watch your pinwheel spin fast in front of a fan. The wind from the fan is a force pushing against the wings of the pinwheel. Try making your pinwheel spin faster and slower by moving it closer and farther from your fan. Try turning your pinwheel so that the air hits it in a different place. How does this affect the rate of its spinning? William Kumquamba's windmill worked a little bit like a bicycle to generate electricity. When you push the pedals of a bicycle, the chain turns the wheel, moving you forward. In the windmill, the wind pushed the blades, which turned magnets inside of a coil, generating electricity. William never stopped building and dreaming. His work with the Moving Windmills Project has helped people all over Malawi. For more information about receiving STEAM kits in the mail, visit the Kids and Families page at kuzbaylibrary.org.